Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Ulan Gaming, and I'm here with another tier list for the Units in Age of Empires 3. This time we'll be doing the Heavy Cavalry. Now, once again, uh, Aussie Drongo made a video on this tier list uh, a while ago, but there, ha but it's outdated as there have been four new civs that have been released since then that are not uh, represented as well as several balance changes that have come out. And uh, what makes me uniquely qualified for this is uh, I have been helping out, uh, if you've seen some of the other videos on my channel, with developing an app for this game. And as such, uh, part of my job was to go through every single unit in the game and record multipliers and information into spreadsheets. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more qualified to, as I've seen a lot more of these than many people are. So uh, with that all out of the way, let us begin. I will preface this by saying that my list will look far more similar to Drongo's in this particular category than, than perhaps some of my others, just because I do think that everything Aussie has said here is pretty much super accurate. And so what the, the, the real meat and potatoes of this will be towards the end when we get into the uh, new civilizations. But I will go over uh, all of the, um, I, I will go over all of the units. It's not like we'll be glossing over things, but uh, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, first thing that we're going to put in is uh, the S-Class and uh, we'll get the obvious ones out of the way, the Kurasir. Uh, Kurasir has high enough damage, high, is super tanky, it has uh, high enough damage and splash that it can get away with fighting its counters, and it's just super tanky because of it. Uh, specifically, it also scales off H3 stats, and so works really well with the combat cal uh, with the uh, cavalry combat card, which boosts it immensely. And it also scales really hard into the end game because of this as well. So that is what makes the Kurasir up there, uh, just simply because of its absolute tankiness. Uh, before we go too further into um, the uh, the S classes, I just wanted to throw out the three kind of archetypes, shall we say, for the heavy cavalry. You have what I call the bonk whack-a-mole type which is things like the Hussar, where they just bonk things on the head with their swords and do damage. And they're kind of tanky, and they do a decent chunk of damage for their population, and that's about it. Uh, then you have the uh, Splash type, which is things like the Kurasir or the Iron Flail, for example, from China, uh, that are based around doing splash damage to as many things as possible. Uh, and really spreading their damage out over lots of different units. And then you have what I call the Lancer types, which are obviously things like Lancer or Naginata Riders, which have lower attack, but a high multiplier against infantry. Uh, and all of these have their merits, um, and a lot of people question why they might ever want a Hussar when they might have the option for a Lancer type instead. Well, the Hussar has its use as well, because the Hussar beats the Lancer types. The Hussar isn't just a whack-a-mole used against skirmishers, it's also a face tank in general, as they're pretty tanky, and win against a lot of the other more specialized cavalry units. So every unit has its, uh, has its flaws and gains, and the Hussar specifically, uh, are units that perform well against their counters, but also perform well against others in their weight class. Uh, even if they don't perform as well against their counters as some others. So with that out of the way, uh, we'll get in. Uh, we'll, we'll actually get into this. Uh, the Chima Runner is a whack-a-mole type, just like a Hussar. Uh, and as we all know, the Chima Runner is in S class. Uh, once again, just uh, as Aussie Drongo stated, uh, it's because of their excellent pathing, the fact that they can just slip into ranks and just start beating out all the enemies. It, it, it just makes the Chima Runner fantastic. You can slip them right into the enemy and uh, hit attack move. Uh, they, it, the case used to be that Chima Runners could not be snared. This is no longer the case. They can now be snared, but they have a Corolian esque big button charge ability uh, on them that temporarily increases their movement speed and removes their capability to be snared. So they're very, very good at dealing with artillery as well. And the Chima Runner is just overall an extremely powerful unit. I think it has like 20 or 22 base damage as well. At one population, that is a ton of damage for uh, a shock infantry unit like it is. So um, next, we will be going over 
the next S class, uh, which is going to be the Tacoa Soldier. It is a Lancer type with like something ridiculous, like a four times multiplier against infantry or something silly like that, kind of like a Lancer. Uh, so sorry, kind of like an El Medi. Uh, these dudes are the Lakota shipment only uh, slash the uh, shipment only slash uh, ceremonial uh, the community plaza unit. And they are just absolute monsters on the battlefields. Uh, they can outspeed dragoons uh, because of they can outspeed dragoons because of the explorers. Uh, so they even have really high movement speed on top of their very tanky uh, stats. They have range resistance as well. Uh, so it takes a little bit longer for them to get one shot by things like dragoon types uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I will say, however, that I do think the heavy cavalry class has gotten a little bit worse. Uh, and that is mostly just because, uh, as I mentioned with the skirmishers, the increase, uh, the, the increased amount of unit selection from 50 to 90, I think it is, is it kind of hurts the Hussar class because most of these cost two populations, so you're never going to be able to have more than 50 of them anyways. But with skirmishers, the fact that you're able to control so many more of them uh, makes them a lot more appealing and easier to control against things like Huss Raids, and you can very easily mass enough that you can shoot down a Hussar in one hit uh, if you have enough of them. And so uh, I do think, and that, that is something that was a lot harder to do before because of the uh, unit selection cap at 50. So I do think that the Heavy Cavalry class has gotten a little bit worse with Pathen becoming a little bit more important, but it is still overall a very, very solid and important class uh, in this game. And there are a lot of S-tier cavalry as well. And I just realized I don't have the Spahi here. Shit. Fuck. Okay, I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out I was blind and the Spahi is right here. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna put the Spahi also in S-class. Uh, it is just overall a extremely solid unit. Uh, it's available only through shipments, which does kind of suck, but the Ottomans are very, very uh, reliant on this unit when it comes to the Fortress and Industrial Age, and for good reason, because Fahi are absolute monsters and game changers. They're tanky like the Kurasir, but have the damage output of the Tekoa. It is absolutely nuts. Uh, Spahi, stat for stat, are like some of the best units in this game. Uh, so next, uh, we will talk about, let's talk about the Hackapella. Uh, so Aussie put the Hackapella in C tier, and I would say that's probably justified. Uh, so the Hackapella, despite being a ranged cavalry unit, uh, is, ca is treated as a heavy cavalry in terms of its multipliers. It has a... Uh, ranged pistol attack that is short and high damage, and it's supposed to be treated as basically a hussar, but with range attack instead of, but with range damage instead of melee damage. Uh, and the primary problem with this is that the main things that cavalry in particular are supposed to counter, i.e., skirms and artillery, all have range resistance. So there's the, the, the uses for this unit are extremely niche. Um, it does perform better against heavy cavalry, against heavy infantry, just because uh, heavy infantry often have range resist, have melee resistance. But of course, that also comes at the cost of having less HP than the Hussar, so then they still lose to heavy infantry. And there's just the, the uses for this unit are very niche. Uh, they're also coin heavy, which is not great. Um, they do, weirdly enough, have a multiplier against pets. So if you're fighting some India player who is like trying to rush you down with, uh, rush you down with like tigers and stuff, uh, which does happen occasionally, uh, you can send the early hack of pellets card and use those to counter. Uh, or towards the late game, if a Aztec player sends his Jaguar card or an Inca player sends the Peruvian dogs card, hack of pellets can be used in those situations to help deal with those units. So they're not entirely useless, but they're so niche, I wouldn't put them any higher than C tier. It doesn't help that... Uh, it, it, I suppose we could actually put them in D, because uh, it, it, it doesn't help that Sweden 
uh, Sweden's coin gathering got nerfed especially hard at the Torps. So all, all of their coin uh, gatherings did at the Torps, but it, I think it shows the most in coin. Uh, next, we will talk about... Uh, let's see, we'll talk about the Ulan. Uh, Aussie, once again, uh, put this... I don't remember where we put this, actually. It was C or B. Uh, we'll put it in B, I guess, uh, just because they are high damage. And uh, his main reasoning was there's not a single Germany player in the universe who doesn't wish that the Ulan was a Hussar, because his Ulans just lose to everything because they're so incredibly squishy. They have super high damage output, but 190 HP with a two pop Huss unit is just not fantastic. Uh, because you can't, it, well, you can mass them easily, you can't mass enough of them to tank anything, and so you do have to be very selective and extremely watchful with where your Ulans are placed, because they will die in seconds if the enemy gets any kind of counter on top of them. Um, they are still great for raids. Uh, I would argue that Hussar are better for raids, because they take more than three town center shots to die from. Uh... But other than that, that, that is where we're going to stick the Ulan for now. I may or may not adjust it later. Uh, we'll also talk about the Sour. Uh, the Sour is in much the same place as the Ulan for much of the same reasons. But I do think it is notably worse than the Ulan. Uh, it is faster. Uh, they are both available in the second... But they both suffer from the same problem of being very, very squishy. Uh, Sours will die in seconds, just like Ulans will. Uh, and the Sours' main thing is that they have uh, Lancer-type multipliers, where they have a 2 times against infantry and a 0.5 against heavy infantry uh, to counter that up. And they have 20 base damage. They do 40 damage to skirmishers and 20 to everything else. And this is, I think, rather unfortunate, and I do think it is worse than the Ulans because the multiplier is so big that their base attack has to be so small. So in addition to being squishy, they also suck against everything that they do not directly counter. Uh, so I, they, they do have their place in the game, but I definitely think that once you hit H3 as an India player, you're probably going to stop using these in exchange for better units. Uh, so that is where we will place Sours. Uh, let's talk about the Cossack now. So the Cossack, uh, it's in the same... It's in the same... It, it's a whack-a-mole type, just like all of these have been. Uh, but just because of... The, uh, but, but, but just, and it is a one population unit with very high stats for a one pop unit. And in that regard, it's kind of similar to the Reuter. Uh, and so it is just overall a very solid A tier cavalry unit that will probably end up being at the top of A tier. It's nothing ridiculous like the Kurusir or the Shimus or the Spahiar, but if you see an army of Cossacks, you do need to be very careful uh, because they can mass a lot of. And they are pretty cheap, just because most of Russia's units are cheap. Uh, let's talk about the Kanya Horseman. Uh, we'll put the Kanya Horseman higher than the Sour. Uh, but it's definitely nowhere near... Nothing out of B tier, and that's mostly just because it costs wood. Uh, and wood is just not... As everybody knows, wood is just not a great resource for the... It is just not a great thing for the longevity of a unit type. Uh, it's actually one of the things I really like about the Arrow Knight in the artillery class, it's, is it's one of the only artilleries that doesn't cost wood. Uh, it's food and coin. Uh, so, for that reason, I do think the Kanya is definitely hurt by its cost. Uh, it is very tanky. It starts, well, it starts out with less HP than a Hussar, but, uh, as, uh, but uh, as with all of Howard's units, they're very upgradable. Um, just through the use of TPs and the Explore Aura and cards and such, and the Kanya Horseman can just absolutely face tank everything in the game, and that is a very, very nice thing uh, going forward. But it's not enough, I don't think, just because of that wood cost. And it's not like the Coyote Runner, which also costs wood, uh, which I think, which got moved up a place, I do believe, for the uh, Aztecs, just because there is a card in H3 that can convert their wood cost to a food cost. Uh, so we're going to put... Uh, previously, 
uh, Aussie put these in C, but because of the new inclusion of the Aztec mining card, I definitely think they are above C. Um, I, I, probably, I think they're better than the Uwan now, in all honesty. Uh, they are they, they have less hit points, but they're also half the population. Um, so they're 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 a whack-a-mole type, but uh, they're more they're more closely related to the Cossack now, in terms of raw stats. They're also smaller models than most of these cavalry units, so they do have better pathing. But the pathing is nowhere near as good as the Chimu. Uh, there is also the uh, notable benefit that uh, Coyote runners can go into stealth. If you send a stealthy Ki if you send the stealth coyotes card in age two, whereas um, Chimus have to wait until age four for their stealth card, uh, but I don't think this is enough to put the coyotes any higher on the list, just because no no Aztec player puts the stealth coyotes card in their decks because the Aztec Aztec actually are one of the sieves that exhaust most of their cards each game because of the sheer amount of XP they get. And so you have to be very, very selective of which cards you actually put in your deck. And the Coyote Runner is just... And the Stealth Coyotes is just not a high-priority card as opposed to other more important upgrades and cards. Uh, so it's not so just because they can go stealth. Uh, I, I'm not going to put them any higher because of it. Because you'll f very rarely find an Aztec player who actually has and sends that card. Uh, so next we'll talk about some of the Lancer types, I guess. Uh, starting with the Lancer. Um, I'll see you put the Lancer in B tier, and uh, that's probably fair. They're decently tanky. They have a two times multiplier against all infantry, but unlike every single other one of the Lancer types, except for like El Medi, but that's a mercenary, uh, they don't have a negative multiplier against. Uh, they, they don't have a negative multiplier against uh, heavy infantry, like the Sours do. So they are tankier than the Sour, cost the same amount of population, and do more damage to infantry to heavy infantry than the Sour, which just makes them better than Sours. Uh, they even have the same base attack as a Sour, so it really is a side-by-side -side comparison on how much better the Lancer is than the Sour. And honestly, the more I think about it, I think I'll put the Sour in C tier. Um, I also think the Lancer is better than the uh, Kanya Horseman. I don't think it's better than the Ulan, uh, just because the Ulan is uh, something that the Germany will always have plenty, it will always have in spades, just because of their bonus uh, in coming with shipments. Uh, I think that I think this right here is going to be a pretty fair spot for uh, the Lancer. It definitely outclasses the Sour. I think it will still lose against like pretty much every single thing here, um, but it wins. Uh, but 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 it does perform better against its counters than the Sours do. So uh, that is definitely a point in its favor there. Uh, let's talk about the Mahout Lancer. Uh, since we talked about the Sour. So the Mahout Lancer is a Lancer type and that has multipliers against... Uh, the the Mahout Lancer is a Lancer type and that has multipliers against infantry and negative multipliers against heavy infantry to counter it out. But it's also like the Kurasir in that it has Splash as well. So this really... And it's also tanky as ever-living fuck. So it really is... I think a fantastic cavalry unit that belongs in the A tier. It does come at the cost of costing a lot of population, uh, but there are cards to remedy this, and if you want to go heavy on the elephants as India, it is absolutely possible. Their combat card uh, affects all elephants, so all three of the elephant units, and uh, the card for the, the elephant combat card is a 20%, which is very notable considering all of the elephants have stupid high stats that scale in the Fortress Age. Uh, so I do think that the Mahout is definitely a fantastic card. They have uh, cards that can reduce their cost and their train speed and their population cost as well. And I do think that if you want to go uh, heavy on the elephants as India, it is something that you can absolutely do. Because uh, they are very upgradable. You also have the uh, Mansabdar. Uh, and also the um, two and three uh, Mahout Lancers 
available in the Third Age, the, the shipments for India are absolutely fantastic shipments that should never go over looks. Uh, as Aussie said, in combination with an aggro fort, with, with a forward aggro like most India players will do, or even a defensive one, it just makes it very, very difficult to push an India player once they get to the third age, because you know, even if they don't have any sours on the field, you're going to need some anti-cav, because there's always the possibility that he can pop Mahouts on you from the shipment, and it is just something you always need to be careful of watching. Uh, now let's talk about the Obri, since we talked about the Cossack. Uh, let's just finish off the uh, Russia units. Uh, the Obri we're going to put in probably A tier. Uh, it, it's not really good. We'll put it at the bottom of A tier. So whatever else comes in A tier will go below the Cossack. Uh, we'll, we'll go in front of the, uh, the Obri. Uh, so Opries, obviously their primary job is to run around the map, be annoying, and siege down as many things as they possibly can. And uh, they're definitely very good at that. Um, what definitely holds them back, and the reason I'm going to put them at the bottom of A, is just that they lose, uh, they, they lose against everything else here even harder than the Lancer and Sour. Um, their only specific purpose is raiding and burning stuff down, and it is only because they are so hilariously good at their job uh, that I keep them, that I'm going to keep them in A. I might even bump them down to B, honestly, depending on how this list looks. Um, uh, but they are definitely a little worse than they were in Legacy, just because the cav box is no longer a uh, glitch that you can do. So that is something that definitely hurts the Opry in that regard. Uh, next, let's talk about the Axe Rider. We're just going to go ahead and put it up in S tier along with the Tacola Soldier. Uh, just because it is, like, in terms of the whack a mole type uh, Hussar units that are on Cav and not Achima Runner, they are the best of the best. Uh, point blank period. And it is because they have a very decent HP pool and a very, very high attack in exchange for their decent HP pool. It's comparable to the Ulan. Um, they also have the movement speed. Um, they also have the movement speed aura from their Explorer. And it is overall just an extremely solid choice. Uh, I guess now we'll talk about the three China units. Starting with the Step Rider. Uh, Aussie put these in D. I, however, I'm going to put them in C. Uh, probably above the Sour, because I just really don't like the Sour. <laughs> um, the Step Rider is a one pop Lancer type, so it's like a Cossack, but with lower attack and multipliers against oh, I think you were Jesus Christ! Oh my god, you scared the fuck out of me! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Oh my Jesus fuck! You made me jump out of my seat! Oh! I'm, I'm not talking to myself, I'm recording. Uh, I joined the server and you're just talking, I'm like, uh... <laughs> Be great Why? on the tier list video. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! I realized that's what you were doing halfway through. So, uh, you want me to pull up a stream for you? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I and uh, that's where we're at. Any questions? Any disagreements? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, the iron, the Chinese iron flail is going to be at the bottom of D, even below the hack and pellet. Um, and that's just it. So they are a Curacier type in that they have a low base and high splash, but their stats are just not great for a two pop unit. And the splash is so small that it doesn't really do it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, there's also the fact that uh, they get hurt by... The, uh, there's also the fact that they, uh, China, once again, has banner armies, which are always a bad thing, and banner armies suck. Uh, because you have to, you always have the split army, and you always have to have the resources for the full batch before you start training it. Whereas opposed to the Musketeer, where you can just train one and then switch it to five right before it pops. Uh, then we have the Meteor Hammers. 
uh, I believe this one is. The Meteor Hammer is notably much better. Uh, I'm going to put it right here. Once again, it is hurt by the Banner Armies uh, because it's paired with the Iron Flail, and you can't get them without the Iron Flail, which sucks because Iron Flails are absolute ass. Uh, but Meteor Hammers have a melee attack, but they have like six range on it, and it has a multiplier against artillery. Uh, so I think they're pretty decent, actually. Uh, what do you think about these two, Chase? Uh, I mean, I'm not too knowledgeable about China. That's so. fair enough. <laughs> uh, the Naginata Rider, we're going to put in S tier, probably towards the bottom of S tier. Uh, I, because it is, except for the Tacola Soldier, like the best of the Lancer types, uh, in that it has the same like multipliers as the Lan it has multipliers against infantry like the Lancer. Uh, it does have negative multipliers against heavy infantry, but whereas the Lancer has low attack and loses really hard to everything else here, uh, the Nagi Naga Naga Rider is extremely upgradable and has a much higher base attack than the Lancers, so it can fight against the other Hussar types as well pretty decently. Yeah, and the uh, the multiplier against Skirms is really nice. And having like 30% attack and 10% aura in and 10% HP and auras is also ridiculous. Also true. Yeah, the Naginata definitely not OP, but one of the best, uh, best Hussar type heavy mm -hmm. cab type units in the game. Yep. Uh, so you missed it earlier, obviously, because you weren't here. Um, but I kind of broke down the, the three Hus classes, the, the three heavy clav classes into like the, the, the heavy clav classes into like three subclasses. You have what I call the the whack a mole ones, which are like the Hussar, where they walk around and they hit things and they tank, and that's all they do. Uh, the Lancer types, which have multipliers against infantry, and the Cuirassier type, which have splash. Uh, the Naginata Rider is the best of the Lancers by far, I do think, except for the Tacola Soldier. Yeah, probably. Uh, this one right here is the Lafiti Knight. Uh, I definitely think the Lafiti Knight... Is, so, actually, let's talk about... Uh, right, I, I always talk about the new units last. Uh, the Tushunki Prowler. Uh, this is the Lakota heavy cavalry unit available in H3 that has a build limit on it. And their gimmick is that they can go stealth. That, that's their gimmick. Um... Aussie put them in C. I'll put them at the top of C, because uh, I do think that's fair. Uh, the Tushunki don't have incredible stats. Uh, you need a card to increase their build limit, and it kind of telegraphs that you're going Tushunki pretty easily, and if somebody sees that, they're going to bring out their Explorer, and they're going to uh, and they're gonna keep their they're, they're going to try to spot your Tushunki all day long, so it's a very easy one to try to, 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 try to see coming. Uh, you play Lakota Chase. What are your thoughts? Do you think they should go higher, lower? I mean, again, I just started playing Lakota, and I haven't really used the Prowlers. Okay. Probably to their effectiveness. Got it. Got it. I think they're they they, they do have higher siege than normal uh, cavalry units that that Lakota has. They might. But like Lakota also has the siege dance, so there's not really too much of a point there. Uh, and I do believe that leaves only the Hussar and the new units. Right? Yeah. There's nothing else here that I missed. Okay, so, uh, the British Hussar, uh, goes in A, because the Brits have pretty good Hussar upgrades and early, enough early game economy to support going, uh, pure Hussar in the second stage. Um... And it's something that they can absolutely do and can really throw off your opponent who is probably expecting them to go uh, Longbowmen or Musketeers, and now you have to face pretty beefed up Hussar. Uh, so I think that's a pretty fair spot for them. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you do see Brits go Hussar more often than not, uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of unexpected, but maybe that's coming into the meta more often. Um, maybe it's just becoming more popular because they are i mean they are pretty good units if you're not especially if you're not expecting it yeah yeah uh i do think the swedish hussar are better because it is even more unexpected and because i've seen you the way i the way i've seen you use it i know that 
the stats they can reach can be absolutely fucking nuts. They can be equivalents to age three Hussar in the second age very easily. Yeah, and then once you hit age three, they're even better. Yeah, uh, so I definitely think the Swedish Hussar is better than the uh, the British Hussar. Just because if a Swede player chooses to go for Hussar, it's so much more unexpected and harder to deal with. Than, uh, than uh, yeah, as long as you can keep your mass alive. Yeah, as long as you can is, keep the mass which alive. Which is the hard, harder part. I think it's probably better in team games. Yeah, uh, agreed. Because, I mean, I, I st I'm pretty sure our Hussar Cowboy strat is undefeated. It might be. It's a good likelihood. Yeah. Spain Hussar. Uh, Aussie put these in B. However, um, I'm going to put them towards the bottom of A. Oh, uh, the Ilbri should be at the bottom of A as well. Uh, and this is because... Do you remember that game we played? I think it was a comp. I was going Marines or something like that. And the Spain player, we destroyed his base. And he basically just sent Unction and spammed Hussar the entire game and stayed in the second what age. Shit. And yeah, his age two Hussar were running around the map in like tw like 25 minutes holding their own because they had like 45 attack. That, yeah, Unction is nuts. That is why I put the <laughs> Spain Hussar in A tier. Just... Because of Unction and the fact that Unction can perform well with the Hussar because the Hussar has high bases and the Unction missionaries are also cavalry and can keep up with them in speed. Uh, yeah, those missionaries are really fa ridiculously fast. Yeah. Uh, Portuguese Hussar I'd probably define as the culmination of average. Is that fair? Uh, seeing as I played ports as in our level one Civ mm -hmm. matchup, I I don't I don't have the knowledge. We don't see a lot of ports playing on the ladder either. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've got ports definitely have better units. Like their, their Casadors and their Dragoons are pretty good. So that's what you see a lot. And of. their Musketeers. Uh, the Musketeers actually pair really well with the Castadors because uh, all the upgrade cards for Castadors also affect the Musketeers. But I, I do think that the, the, the Portuguese Cesar is just the definition of average. Like, if you were to say, if I were to ask you what is the most average Hussar unit in the game, I would say, you, you would say ports. Because ports don't have anything special about their Hussar. It's serviceable, it is, it's just not as good as like anything else. You know, that's fair. Uh, the same can probably be said for Ottomans, but I will place the Ottoman Hussar higher uh, because the Ottomans do have upgrade cards for their Hussar as well as a Royal Guard upgrade. Um, the problem is you never see auto players go Hussar because it's it, auto Hussar is even more outclassed by Janissary Abbas than British Hussar is outclassed by uh, by uh, Musketeers is the problem. And so while, you, the, while all, uh, the Ottoman do have good upgrades for the Hussars, they generally will omit these so that they have more room for upgrades for their infantry instead. That makes sense. Uh, French Hussar. I think these go probably an A above Brits. And Sweden, actually. Yes. Uh, and this is just because it's it, as easy as it is for uh, Sweden to get like fantastic hussars. France can do the exact same shit, and it's way more sustainable because of a uh, courier de bois. And also, their cavalry one of their cavalry combat cards in H two is a team card. I'm pretty sure. So it's just France goes cal France goes H two hus. Yes, sir. Bring it all the way. Switch under cruisers when you get to H three, but like yes, please. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dutch Hussar I'll probably put the Dutch Hussar above the Coyote Runner uh, and that it, it, Dutch do have one, uh, lots of coin production so it's very easy for them to go with the Hussar and they pair very well with the H2 skirmishers that Dutch has it's just an overall solid choice if you're playing Dutch it's not mm -hmm. great it's, it's just solid you know it's no Reuter. It's no Reuter. That is very true. 
but as an age two unit, it's it's pretty great. And now we'll talk about the new units that have come out with the four civilizations since. Uh, so the Shuttle Warrior is a it's an equivalent of like the uh, the Coyote Runner and the Chima Runner for Inca and Aztec, but it's also way worse than either of them. I'm gonna put it like right here, or uh, right, put it below the Tashoki Prowler. Uh, and that's because it has similar HP to the Coyote and the Chimu, and similar speed, and it costs one, and it's shock infantry and all that, but it's Lancer-type. Um, so it does 13 base damage with a 1.25 against heavy infantry and a negative multiplier, uh, sorry, against infantry and a negative multiplier against heavy. Uh, but the problem is its base attack is so low that even with the multiplier, it does less damage than the Coyote Runner or the Chimo Runner. <laughs> it does, oh, that's awful. yeah, it does 16 damage against infantry and Coyotes, I'm pretty sure do 17 or 18 at base and Chimus do like 20. So it's got the benefits of the Coyote and the Chimu in terms of costing one pop and being a small unit and having decent pathing, but its damage just is just so shit that it doesn't matter. Gotcha. Uh, the Raider is just Ulans, but better. Um, I, they're probably Ulans, but worse, actually. Uh, they are pretty upgradable for Hausa. Uh, they have a larger HP pool, uh, but much lower damage. Uh, no, they're, they are definitely Ulans, but better, because I forget they are one population, and Ulans are two. Uh, so Raiders are just very solid throughout the whole game. I'll probably put them in A below the Opry, uh, above the Opry. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I keep moving them up. Uh, definitely not above the Spain Hussar, I don't think. Um, but raiders are very, very solid. They only cost one population, and they have, like, the same siege as all of the two pop us. So I think that's really, really good. Any disagreement there? Nope. Okay. Uh, the Aroma Warrior is... It's like a hack a pellet, but it costs three pop and has tons of damage. And it's Ethiopian. But the, just the fact that it's be, it, it's like the hack pellet, um, it does have a higher rate of fire uh, the closer you are. But I think the hack pellet already has like 1.5 rate of fire on its range attack, right, Chase? Uh, yeah, it does. And the Oromo starts at, I think, 4, and it goes down uh, as as they get closer to the enemy. So I can't see, I can't justify putting it above probably the Tashinki or, some, or anything like that. They're really expensive. Um, and they cost three population like the Kurisir, so you can't have her very many of them, and they're just not worth it, I don't think. And they're glass cannon-esque, that's true, but, like, still. And that leaves the Lafiti Knights, the Chinako, and the USA Hussar. Uh, we'll probably talk about the USA Hussar first, since it's kind of generic, you know? Uh, so the USA Hussar is actually usable, and it is something that you can absolutely go for. I use the USA Hussars quite a bit uh, when I played USA, uh, and that's especially true after they got buffed uh, recently with the Georgia Hussars card uh, in Age 3, which makes Hussars cheaper, and it also upgrades them to the veteran status for free. Uh, now, USA don't actually have any combat cards for uh, Hussars until age 5, if they age with Florida, where they get 15% attack and hit points, as well as a reduction to their train speed. Uh, which is not great, granted, um, but the fact that they are cheap makes these Hussars extremely spammable. And uh, you can very easily mass large amounts of Hussars after you send that card. I think they only cost 102 food and 68 coin. Very, very, very cheap. Um... And there's always the uh, Inspiring Flag, which can boost attack as well. So I do think that the USA Hussar is better than the Coyote Runner, and probably better than the Dutch Hussar uh, as well. There it is. Uh, I know you don't play very much United States, Chase, but do you have any comment on that? Uh, I mean, no, not really, other than the fact that you don't really see a bunch of USA players going with Hussar. I mean, they it, 
they more commonly go for like cowboys or or some kind of outlaw build when they decide to go hussar or when they decide to go cav. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and that is definitely the, the cowboy is definitely going to be a lot higher on the list than the USA hussar when I get to the goon tier list. And that leaves the Lafini Knight and the Chinako. Chinako has 290 HP. Uh, it has 25 base attack. Uh, it has Lancer multipliers like the Nagi Nada. Uh, but it also has a Cavalry multiplier. So it performs just as well against the Hussar. Uh, it, the Cavalry multiplier uh, is to kind of counter the fact that it has lower attack. So it actually performs just as well against the Hussar or pretty much any of these as the Hussar would, uh, except for its lower HP values. Uh, but the fact is that Nagi are far more upgradable than the Chinakos, uh, just because of the massive amount of attack boosts that you can get. Uh, Chinakos, however, can get an upgrade card that gives them a big button ability to go stealth without losing movement speed, which is really, really funny to use. Um, so we will be putting the Chinako probably towards the uh, top of A tier. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a really powerful unit that you see a lot of Mexican players using. Yeah. Uh, and the Lafiti Knight, uh, S, 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 probably like right here. <laughs> Lafini Knights are so fucking tanky. They don't have very much attack, but you can get a card that gives them splash, and they have a absolutely ridiculous amount of base HP in the second age. Even though they even though they are age three locks, they have age three stats that can be upgraded in age three. And Lafini Knights are just so incredibly ridiculously tanky. Um they don't lose. They, you can get a card that allows them an age two, and they don't have any stat reduction on them. Uh, they are nuts, all the way around. Uh, you can put them at the front, and it doesn't matter how much anti cav your enemy has. You will just pelt at them with all of your other units and behind the Lafiti Knights, and they will just eat, soak up hits like it's nothing. Yes, S tier, one of the best in the game. I still remember the game where we were against a Hausa player. And you and I both went for like pikemen, pikemen and Corollians. and I went. I was using like plume spearmen, actually, because I was playing Inca at the time. And the Lafitte Knights just rolled through us. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, with with the help of some Fulani archers in the back line, of course. Uh, but this will be all. Do you, do you see anything that you would change about this list overall? I would probably drop Opries down to B tier at the best, but okay, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that, that's definitely uh, an agreeable thing. Where do you think they'd be in B tier, towards the bottom or towards the top? Uh, I mean, probably in the middle. I mean, they they really you only ever see Russia use them for raids. Uh, they they don't have a whole bunch of viability, uh, in my opinion, and in in my experience. Uh, beyond like raiding and destroying i mean they're great as support units if you can get in and, and get raids or destroy walls or destroy buildings while you're fighting they're great as support units but beyond that all right yeah that seems very so great okay and uh this will be the conclusion of the heavy cavalry tier list uh thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen hope you have a great day and goodbye